Jesse V. Do you like that I'm wearing a skeleton shirt in January? I feel like we're on our way to Halloween and I wanted to be a skeleton today. All right guys, so today we'll be continuing our series about creepy things that were normal in blank time period. Obviously by the title you can see that we're doing ancient Egypt, which has always fascinated me. These facts are mind blowing. But before we get started, this is the last time you're gonna be seeing this Sailor Moon background behind me. So if you would like to win it, all you have to do is be subscribed to this channel, so my Jesse B channel, turn on your notification bell, and then head over to the new channel that I created. It was originally called Jesse B Shorts. We had a bit of a mix up and I changed it to be a book review channel. So now it is Jesse's bookshelf. So all you have to do is be subscribed there to be entered to win this background. Exciting news, I am posting my first video on that channel this week. I'm going to be reviewing the Folk of Air series, AKA The Cruel Prince. So if you guys like books and you're interested in book reviews and hearing my opinion, definitely go check out that channel. I have linked it down below. All right guys, so without further ado, let's get right into today's video. The first fact is that some ancient Egyptian tombs actually had some pretty creepy curses put on them. Now the most famous one was called King Tut's Curse. The story goes that anyone who was involved with the 1923 excavation of Pharaoh Tutankhamun's tomb was doomed to suffering and death. Now at first everyone thought that this curse was just nonsense, but then one of the men who removed the Pharaoh, his name was George Herbert. He died two months later from blood poisoning after this tomb's discovery. But the others involved in this survived much longer. It only seemed to be him, but obviously that death must have just been a coincidence. But there are some pretty creepy curses written on the walls of ancient tombs. Thousands of years ago, many Egyptians believed that their mummified body was put in a tomb and any interference with their remains jeopardized their existence in the afterlife. For example, there's one inscription on the wall that tells any visitors not to take even a pebble from within the tomb outside, beware of forcefully removing the stone from its place. So literally don't touch anything, not even the rocks or the stones or the sand. Similar curses were put there to ward off grave robbers and unfortunately it was a common problem. For example, another curse tells trespassers that anything they might do against this, my tomb, the same shall be done to your property. He also threatened to plague them with the fear of seeing ghosts. And this was at the tomb of Ankh-Mahor. I'm sorry, I'm probably saying this totally wrong. But yeah, anyone who goes and visits these tombs or these mummies, don't take anything, don't touch anything, maybe don't even go there. All right, the next fact is that ancient Egyptian temples were filled with crocodiles. Some temples dedicated to gods also watched over their associated animals. Ancient Egyptian priests were tasked with taking care of animals as an act of devotion to their god. This was probably fine for the priests and priestesses to deities like the cat-headed Bastet, but you may have been creeped out by the temple to Sobek. Sobek was the god of the Nile who sported a crocodile's head on top of a man's body, and some temples dedicated to him also kept real Nile crocodiles, some even with nurseries for hatchlings. Now, many of these crocodiles in these temples were actually adorned with jewelry and gold. Like, really brave priests would come up and put, like, jewels all over these crocodiles. Archaeologists have uncovered evidence that these animals were fed a fine diet far better than some human Egyptians at the time. And apparently after these crocodiles died, they were also mummified, which is interesting. Then there was something called professional mourners. Now death was a very big deal in ancient Egyptian culture, which also meant the funeral itself was also obviously a very big deal. One of the most striking traditions was that of the professional mourner. These were women who were paid to act out extravagant grief. In some paintings, they appear to be weeping and disheveled, wailing while they touch the deceased coffin. So they literally would not even know the person. They were kind of like actors and they would just go there and just give this huge show of crying and being upset. All right, let's talk about the mummification process. After everyone agreed on a price, embalmers would take this tool and they would draw out the brains through the nostrils. You probably learned this in school, right? I did. Then they would make an incision in your belly, they would take out all of your innards, and then they would pour like salt all over the wounds. Now apparently this was a very difficult process and it would often take 70 days per person to be completely mummified. Incorrectly preserving the dead sometimes meant that they would return and bother the living. Illness and bad fortune 
misfortune could be blamed on the restless dead if their mummification was botched. And then the angry spirit would have to be shooed back to the afterlife by a priest. So. Alright, let's talk about the fake beards. Most statues of pharaohs depict them with long, tightly braided beards, but it was all a lie. The beards were completely synthetic because cleanliness was very important to ancient Egyptians. So for them, that meant keeping their faces completely free of hair. The beards were worn to imitate the god Osiris, who also wore a fake beard. And lastly, let's talk about the blind man. This is a very disturbing story. An ancient Egyptian named Pharos was angry with the Nile for refusing to cooperate and stop flooding. So enraged by the river constantly overflowing, he angrily threw a spear into the river. So then, as a punishment for disrespecting the gods, he was blinded. A decade later, he went to an oracle, and this oracle told him that he had to wash his eyes out with the urine of a woman who was completely faithful to her husband. And once he did that, it would cure his blindness. Sounds reasonable, right? So, Pharaoh's first tried dousing his eyeballs with the urine of his wife, because obviously he assumed that she would be faithful and that was the closest thing to him, right? Well, it did not work. After that, he made every woman he could find pee in a pot so he could pour it onto his eyes, and eventually Pharaoh's found the perfect pee. He poured it into his eyes, his eyesight was restored, and then he married the magic pee woman immediately and divorced his wife, and actually had her burned to death because her pee originally didn't work on him. He thought that she was unfaithful and then she uh, she died. So yeah, I read this story and I was like, what the heck was going on back then? There's actually a lot more very bizarre stories like this. But uh, yeah, that is the end of today's video about ancient Egypt. There's obviously so many more facts. So if you want me to continue this series, give this video a thumbs up and let me know. And don't forget, after watching this video, if you guys can go and subscribe to my book channel, it's called Jesse's Bookshelf. I have linked it down below. But yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!